This was not surprising to me, but it is surprising to some. Miss Liz Cheney herself has decided to endorse Kamala Harris. Now, again, we'll hear her endorsement here. <laughs> Liz Cheney. Oh, honey, honey, honey. It's interesting now how like the Democratic Party has just come around to Liz Cheney, how they like her all of a sudden because she went against Donald Trump. You know, I still remember some of the things that Liz Cheney said. And some of the things that she did, I mean, she was another war hawk. I remember the language that she had around the LGBTQ community, even though her sister, if I remember this correctly, I think her sister was also LGBTQ and she went against that and everything, you know, to further her political career. And then she lost, <laughs> she lost the last one, but the democratic party seemed to have embraced her recently. Listen to this. As a conservative, as someone who believes in and cares about the Constitution, uh, I have thought deeply about this. And because of the danger that, that Donald Trump poses, uh, not only am I not voting for Donald Trump, but I will be voting for Kamala Harris. So that was Liz Cheney there, ladies and gentlemen, telling you that she will be voting against Donald Trump and she will be voting for Kamala Harris. Now, some people saw this and they like freaked out and they were like, oh, I can't believe it. I'm so it was surprised. But if you've been paying attention to politics over the past like two years, I think you saw this coming that Liz Cheney was going to support the Democrat candidate and not the Republican candidate. I don't even think just Donald Trump. I just think anybody that would have been a part of that Trump coalition, I don't think she was going to support right now. She did this when she was running for reelection and she lost, but she still stood by, you know, what she said, but some people are surprised. And I want to take you back to a moment where uh, I realized that things had changed. And that was Robert Reich. He wrote this article called Liz Cheney for president. And I just lost it. I think a lot of us, when we saw this, we were like, what in the hell is wrong with Robert? Liz Cheney for president. This is what Robert Reich said. Friends, I trust Joe Biden's steadiness and judgment. And if he runs again, I'll probably back him in 2024. But today I want to suggest someone who isn't even a Democrat, whose positions on many issues I, and I suspect you strongly disagree with, but who could possibly be the best president of the United States for the perilous time we're entering. I'm referring to Liz Cheney. Now, this is Robert Reich, who I've said before is very good on labor. And I, I just say it this way. I think when it comes to labor, listen to Robert about that. When it comes to strategy, don't listen to Robert. <laughs> okay. Don't listen to Robert. But Robert Reich is really good at explaining to you what the problem is, especially when it comes to the labor in this country, greed. Uh, people not being valued for their work. He's really good at breaking that down. He's written books about this. He's given talks about this. But it always seems like to me that his solution in the end is to keep you in the system that currently exists. I know you're underpaid. I know you're having difficulty finding a job. I know that the billionaires having a tremendous amount of wealth is a problem in this country. But, uh, Let's just keep doing what we're doing. So that's the problem that I have with Robert Reich. He doesn't really want to challenge the system. He wants to tell you the problem, but he doesn't want to challenge it, right? Before you reject this idea out of hand, please bear with me. Even if you still end up thinking it's a ludicrous notion, let me take you through the argument. I've been in and around American politics well over half a century. I've never seen this nation as bitterly divided as it is now, not during the civil rights movement, not during the Vietnam war, not during Watergate. And it looks as if the current division is growing deeper and even more dangerous. Donald Trump didn't just attempt a coup. He attempted to push America into a civil war and he's still at it, endorsing candidates who will repeat this big lie about 2020. We can't get too much into that. You guys know how YouTube is about that, but you know what he's talking about here. In short, Trump wants a civil war centered on himself. 
on his big lie and on the racist nationalism he fueled to build his political base. Trump's narcissism is so poisonous that he is committed to splitting the nation over its commitment to him. As president, Trump never understood that he was president of America as a whole. He considered himself to be president only of his, of his supporters, whom he called my people. Those who didn't support him were his enemies. Since 2020, he has done everything possible to stoke war between his supporters and perceived enemies. Clearly, that's his aim in 2024. Now, let's get to the Liz Cheney part. It will be impossible to reunite this nation without a leader who is the exact opposite of Donald Trump, driven not by narcissism, but by a passion for the rule of law and the constitution, someone who has staked everything on opposing Trump's demagogic authoritarianism, someone with huge stores of courage and integrity. Since the attack on the Capitol, Liz Cheney has demonstrated more courage and integrity than any other politician in America. Democratic lawmakers have opposed Trump's big lie to be sure but most knew they would pay they wouldn't pay a price for their opposition. Cheney knew she would pay a price and she still has. Now, I wouldn't say it was just her. Justin Amash stood up to Donald Trump. I think a lot of people forget about him, but he I think he was the first to do this. He stood up to to Donald Trump way before the whole Capitol incident. Um so I won't say it's just her, but like he stood up to Donald Trump and you know, he kind of went by the wayside. People don't really remember him much anymore. And he goes on to say here this is what she said on the House floor. Much more will become clear in the coming days and weeks, but what we know now is enough. The President of the United States summoned this mob, assembled the mob, and lit the flame of this attack. Everything that followed was his doing. None of this would have happened without the President. The President could have immediately and forcefully intervened to stop the violence he did not. There has never been a greater betrayal of by a president of the United States of his office and his oath to the constitution. The following day on January 13th, Cheney joined nine house Republicans and 222 Democrats in voting to impeach Trump. She subsequently agreed to be vice chairman of the committee investigating the January 6th insurrection. As a result of these actions, Trump and the house GOP leaders have sought to divide or excuse me, drive Cheney out of the party. House Republicans revoked her status as the third highest ranking leader of the Republican caucus. Wyoming Republicans have censured her. Trump and the Republican party are backing her primary challenger in Wyoming, Harriet Hageman, whose campaign has received huge amounts of funding from right-wing groups. Polling shows that Cheney faces an uphill battle to keep her seat. And she lost. She did lose that seat. Last Thursday evening at the start of the televised hearing of the committee, Cheney laid out the case against Trump, whom she argued had thrown the Republic into a moment of maximum danger not seen before. Now, he goes on to say, let me come down here. I hope she declares herself a candidate for president and runs in the Republican primary against Trump. The GOP desperately needs her moral clarity and authority. She would give voice to Republicans who have been voiceless and allow the Republican party to redeem itself, to reclaim the status it needs to ever again be a governing party. If she runs, many Currently, independent voters who outnumber registered Republicans could register as Republicans and vote for her, possibly delivering Trump a sharp uh, repudiation in his own party and making it safe for other Republican lawmakers to declare the truth. So she did not run for president, but Nikki Haley did. So it's almost like Nikki Haley followed this playbook instead of Liz Cheney. And we saw what happened with that, right? That Nikki Haley 
wasn't even winning Republican support in the primary. In different states, as we followed this around, in different states, the majority of people that were voting for her were independent voters and some of them Democrats, but she was not winning the Republican voters. So if Liz Cheney would have followed Robert Reich's you know, idea here, I think the same thing would have happened to Liz Cheney that happened to Nikki Haley. There is like this significant part of the population that is a part of a Trump base, a Trump coalition. And then there are those that are going to vote for the party nominee, regardless who the, the, the nominee is, right? And then you have the independents. But I think what this position showed me with Trump versus Nikki Haley was that Donald Trump has been able to, for whatever reason, he's been able to hold on to a significant portion of his base so much that he was not only able to win that primary challenge against Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley, and he never appeared on the debate stage, Owen oh, Vivek, the snake, and he never appeared on the debate stage. And now it is to the point we're looking at the polling now. Now he is ahead of Kamala Harris in some of the swing states that she was winning. This endorsement here from Liz Cheney, we have to ask, how much is this really going to help Kamala Harris? I don't think it's going to help her as much. I think that most Republicans will support their party. I think that most Democrats will support their party. And then there are people like me, those of us that don't want to support the Republican party or the Democratic party, and we'll vote third party. I'll be voting for Jill Stein. You guys know this. I'm going to support Jill Stein. So while I think many people appreciate Liz Cheney, you know, breaking from her party and saying, I'm going to do what I feel is right. And I'm going to endorse Kamala Harris. I understand some people appreciate that, but I don't see how this is really going to help Kamala Harris in the end.